When I was about 30% through the main story, I noticed the fun slowly fade out. And I considered what the problem was. In this video, I want to show you how to preserve the fun in your current playthrough and preserve the longevity of the game for you. First, I'll give you a very quick explanation of the problem in about 30 seconds and a solution for it, so you don't have to watch the whole video if you don't want to. Okay, the, the, the core problem is that at the beginning, the game is amazingly fun because the low powered weapons you get at the beginning, their physicality matches realism very closely. And as you get more powerful weapons, more powerful abilities, the player power overshoots uh, the physical realism of the, of the game. And that's where the game gets boring. So the, the short answer is that you should avoid using two-handed weapons and the special card abilities that give you more power. You're still with me? Great. Here comes a long explanation. I'll start with the graph. Okay, the, uh, the x-axis is time, that's your playtime in the game. And then we have power, that's the power of your character. I'm going to mark a blue line. Okay, I call this, that's the baseline, that's physical realism, okay. I'm going to use a red line. I'm using it, not using a tab, I'm using a mouse right now, so the curves might not be really smooth. So the next thing is I'm going using a red line, which is the power of character in game. Now, if you, as you start playing the game, it's almost exactly like real life. This is what makes the game fun, okay? If you hit a zombie with a fist in the face, the way it stumbles back and the way the physical forces react on it is very closely matching real life, and it gives you really the sensation you're punching another human, in this case, a human zombie. Okay, this, this is something that this game does amazingly well, better than most other games. Now, as your character progresses, two things happen. He gets better abilities, which means you can jump higher, you can do drop kicks, get additional force to your damage, and you get better weapons. And the problem is then, what then happens is then, not with all weapons, but with, with some weapons, is that uh, your power slowly creeps away and gets, gets like this. Okay, now, what this here means is that the, the physical power, which means how the ragdoll, the force acting on the ragdoll of, of the zombie, it, it increases and it moves away from physical realism. And this is where, where it happens where you have, when you hit somebody with a sledgehammer, you do power attack and you hit the zombie and it just flies away like a paper doll, like a few meters. That breaks the physical realism, the sensation of actually hitting somebody with that thing. And this is sort of the... Uh, this is sort of the, the vacuum that, that ruins the game. That's the vacuum that sucks out all the fun out of the game. Now, as I said at the beginning of the video, in the short answer, you can avoid that problem in two ways. You can not use most two-handed weapons, and you can also avoid using most of the special abilities you get in those cards. In the next segment of the video, I'm going to show you some more details about the combat system and where it becomes effective with bigger weapons. Okay, in this part of the video, I'd like to show you what the essence of combat in this game is, and how it is separated in three different ways to play it. First, I'll show you what I call the, the basic left-click hack-and-slash combat. Okay, I got an isolated zombie over here. Okay, you got the zombie's attention. Now, if you play hack and slash, you, you just go up to it and you just left click until something happens. Okay, that's the first way of combat. Now there's some physicality to it, and the ragdoll reacts realistically to, to the hits. Okay, now I'll show you the second way of combat. I call it the, the quick time event combat. 
Hang on to this one. Now for this for this way of combat, you basically have to trick the zombie into attacking and then dodging it or blocking it, depending on which skill you got equipped. If you do it successfully, the zombie will will turn uh, unresponsive to that. Then you can just press F, and just click on it. And... There is some good physicality to it. Oh, the problem is, it's it's a, it's a deterministic quick time event. You get the zombie to completely be still and just press a button, and that's the most boring way to play the game. And I'd like to show you the third way of playing, which I call organic combat. It's basically a mix of the first two types. It's not just random left-clicking, and it, it has some quick time event functionality to it. Well, it's, it's, it's why I call it organic. Basically, the way it works is that as you're about to attack a zombie, you charge up left mouse to have a power attack, and then you actually have to aim in real time for the body part you want to hit. And if you trigger it right, you're rewarded with a highly fine-tuned animation that impacts the ragdoll in a really good way. Okay, let's demonstrate it one more time on this one. It's, it's, it's the most responsive type of combat. That's what the game was designed for. So can, for example, destabilize the leg. Not a hit. Okay, so where's the issue? Most low-powered weapons in this game are perfectly fine-tuned in the animation system and in the way the ragdoll reacts to the hit for this third type of combat system. Well, uh, some of the more powerful weapons, they have exaggerated physics forces applied, and that completely ruins the illusion of actually hitting a zombie. Okay, first I'll show you a low-powered weapon, so you can see how the physical forces are realistically reacting to it. This here. That's a dagger, that's it's a bladed weapon, but it's it's different than, than other knives in the game, because you do direct stabbing moves. Notice, I'm stabbing the character, but he doesn't like stagger back too much. It really feels like you, you're sticking it into the chest. And this is fun, this feels real. Like you actually, like, the, basically that's the realism that you feel like it's it's sticking and I'm going to switch the weapon. That's a two-handed uh, pickaxe. Notice here, it's already slightly exaggerated. No, that that wouldn't happen in real life if you would swipe somebody with that thing. It would more like fold in on on the spot instead of that happening. Now, if I'm charging up a power attack. See, this is where, where it breaks the game. This is where the game isn't fun anymore, because now the illusion is gone that you're actually having realistic reaction of the zombie ragdoll to the weapon. And most players, I think, don't notice that problem. As they're playing through the game and they want to, like, get through a map to, to survive, then obviously, at some point, you use the, the, the powerful 200 weapons, you just start hack and slashing. You know, like I said earlier, the left-click combat, where you just hack and slash, hack and slash, and you got four or five zombies, and you just... Make him fly through a room like that. And this is where it falls apart with most um, two handed weapons. Or if you use a staff weapon, that's not the case. Because then the forces are still realistically preserved. I'm going to show you how it looks with the staff. We have find an isolated zombie I can, I can fight. Okay, so I'm doing a left click attack first. Actually, just staggering a bit. I actually missed it. Get up.
Not as. She just staggers a bit as she should. Not, not more, not less. I'm charging up the type 3 organic combat. I'm charging up my weapon. I'm going to aim for the chest. You know, I get rewarded with a highly physicalized animation that also matches the, the um, disability of the impact. And I'd like to show you a special case, bladed weapons. Now, the, the problem with long bladed weapons is, is just slightly different. Like, they actually have really rewarding, highly realistic slash uh, impact wounds on the character. Okay, so that part is fun. Oh, the problem is, I think the developers have thought that just slashing does not be having these highly realistic wounds, which I think look really great. Like, the way they layer through the clothing would be enough to, to sell the illusion of, of slashing the zombie. The problem is, it's missing the physicality of it. Like, imagine you would slash a zombie like that. Notice, he doesn't actually react to the force. But there will be some, some resistance to it. Some, there should be some resistance. Imagine, imagine putting up a 10 kilo bag or 20 pounds bag of sand, putting on a table or something. Or slash it with a, with an, with a saw like that. Or if you don't have it, just swipe it with a, with a long stick. You would feel some resistance and the, slow, the, the saw would slow down slightly as you cut through it. Now, as a final demonstration, I'd like to show you how the game reacts to using a short blunt weapon like, like a wrench like this. Okay, let's find an isolated zombie again. This one. What is he, he, he doesn't like stagger away, he, he literally takes the hit and the ragdoll belly moves away. See, that's how it should be. It feels like you're hitting with a blunt object on, on, on a pretty solid human chest. If you do the power attack... Okay, he was already dead. If we do a power attack on this one... Bad example. It, it was slightly exaggerated, but still much better than using the pickaxe. Try on this one again. I think it was slightly exaggerated, but... You can feel the force almost accurate. Okay. That was a perfect hit. That's how it should feel like you've hit him in a wrench. And that was bad. So, to get back to the question at the beginning of the video, how to correctly enjoy the game. Here's what I would suggest. Stick to low-powered weapons or fists. Just treat each zombie fight you have like a duo. And enjoy the interaction. And try out different things, like... Like, instead of playing it with the quick time event mode, which was mode 2, as I explained earlier, where you just dodge them and then press F, Just try to organically dodge a message trying to attack. Then land your punches. Because this way it feels much more satisfying because you really earned that hack. I also think one of the most fun ways to play this game is just using your fists. But well, there's an issue. If you want to select your fists, you cannot normally select them, like it like would in other games. You actually have to make sure the entire active inventory is empty, or a weapon that you're using is breaking, because there's no way to manually select fists. 